to move on from the modeling and sculpting phase of this tutorial series onto retopology. But before I go any further, I want to mention that it's not always necessary to retopologize or create a low polygon version of your model. There are many cases where it's just not necessary. For example, uh, if you're creating something for 3D printing, maybe rapid prototyping, where you're trying to construct something in voxels, you don't have to worry about uh, piddling with vertices or edges or polygons and so on. You can just con use the construction tools and 3D Coat to quickly knock something out, maybe sculpt a little bit, and export a high polygon version of that uh, in FBX, STL, POI format, and so on. And you have different options for that. You can uh, export out as a triangulated mesh, and 3D Coat will decimate it for you. You can designate or specify the polygon count and what it will do is it will use a smart algorithm that leaves you with a lower polygon count in areas where it's more flat and it doesn't need as many polygons and other areas where you may have a lot of details or hard edges it's going to leave you with more polygons in those areas of your model okay so uh, that's one option the other option is exporting with dense quads or projected quads and this will be a little bit cleaner looking mesh but it doesn't necessarily mean it will look cleaner when you render the object out so just something to keep in mind these are some of the different options you have uh, additionally it, again if you're working in graphic design maybe or motion graphics you can render out your sculpt or your object directly here in 3d coat in the render room okay you can render out a turntable uh, if you need or uh, any size of still image you like. I've got real-time render turned on where it's using the GPU to show you the final result. And again you can apply shaders, you can even uh, go in and do some texture painting where it stores the color information and the specular information in the vertices of the model. And so there are videos in the feature demo section that covers vertex or voxel painting and also exporting out those in using vertex color maps to display that color information or that specular information at render time. Okay, so let's go on now to the retopology room or the retopo room. And you can see the base mesh that we started with and what we did here, if you remember early on in this series, is we took a mesh from outside of 3D Coat using the AppLink Connection plugin, I was able to send it directly to the retopology room of 3D Coats. And from here, I just created a copy by going to the Objects section of the Tool Panel here under Merge. And in the Tool Options panel, just chose Pick from Retopo. And I'll go ahead and get out of that. So we had our high polygon or our high resolution model in the voxel room and our low polygon version here in the retopo room. Now, if you need to make large scale edits, whether you're trying to change the proportions of a model or maybe if you're trying to sculpt horns or something like that that's going to protrude from the original model, you may choose to use either one of these three tools, move, Pose or Transform. These are the three tools where you do large scale transform operations uh, in the voxel room here. And with those three tools, you can check Conform Retopo Mesh. And what that will do is it will basically snap or keep uh, intact the vertices that are closest to uh, the areas you're editing or sculpting. Uh, on your Retopo Mesh, it will try to conform it. So let's say, for example, you bring in an object you sculpted, and maybe you want to change the angle of the arms. You want to either raise your arms or lower the arms. Maybe you want to pose the character. Using these tools, like I said, you can do that without having to worry about later on having to go in and manually refitting the mesh all over again. Uh, so that can be a very painful process 
if you don't use uh, those tools. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, let's say we had some small areas where it wasn't quite fitting. We could use global snap where we'll snap the entire mesh to the voxel object. You could have some trouble with that though in certain areas where you have small uh, openings or where your mesh stops right on the edge of an open area like the eyes here. Uh, you could get some snapping issues if you do a global snap so you want to be careful about that. You can snap locally by using the brush tool here. We go to the head area here. You can kind of tweak a particular area. You can hold the shift key to smooth and it will snap at the same time. All you have to do is just move it just slightly or even tap the area and it will snap in a localized fashion. Okay, so you have three main tool sets for retopology and 3D coach. You have manual tools, auto retopology, and then you have intermediate tools. For example, you can use the same models palette that you have available uh, here in the voxel room. You can use many of the same models here as retopology presets. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and isolate the parts of the model that I want to work on. So for example, uh, I have the VoxTree layer panel present here in this interface. And if you do not see the VoxTree layer panel, you can bring it in through the Windows menu, pop-ups, VoxTree. And you can do the same thing with the models palette, shaders, and whichever you like. Okay, and once you dock it somewhere, 3D Coat will memorize its location, so each time you come back, it will be in place. All right, so what I'm going to do in the Vox Tree Layer panel here is I'm going to hold the Alt key while clicking on the visibility icon of the tongue layer. Okay, and I'm going to hide this retopo mesh, create a new layer, double click it, and rename it tongue. And what I can do is choose a retopple mesh that best fits the shape that I want to start with. So I could choose any of these subdirectories. And if I go to Documents, 3D Coat, under Vox Stamps, you'll have the Objects directory here. And this is where your default directory resides. And you can see thumbnails here same thumbnails you have here in this palette and you also have all these subdirectories so you can create your own project directories so anyway all of these directories here are the same that you see here and when you copy a model uh, from anywhere on your hard drive uh, to any one of these directories 3D Coat will create a thumbnail for you so that's very very handy so I'll choose this pill object here in the default directory. I can scale it up, rotate it along the x axis, 90 degrees. Hold the shift key to reorient the gizmo. Scale it up. And I'll hit enter. It's asking, do I want to snap it to the voxel object or reference mesh? In this case, no. We'll make sure auto snap is unchecked. And I can bring the opacity down more or bring it up, whichever I like. Okay. Now, in order to move this into place, I probably need to reduce the number of edge loops here so I'll choose delete edges and with edge loops selected can go in here and just reduce the number 
Maybe select every other loop here. the same thing with all these cross sections all right I think it looks fine so a couple of things I could do I could use the brush tool here to just kind of freeform it and generally massage it into place. Or I could use the select tool, select edges and uh, faces, vertices, whatever, and then use the transform tool. So what I may do is use the brush first. I'm going to scale it up pretty large. could apply symmetry if I want on this model, but I don't think I will. Because some of these lines may not be perfectly symmetrical. Okay. So I just want to get it relatively close so that when I do snap, I eliminate the chance of errors the more geometry I have in a particular area, especially a small area like the tip of the tongue, uh, I'll probably have some snapping issues if I don't get it relatively close. So I probably want to get that right on the tip there. I'm currently using a 3D Connection Space Pilot so I can actually kind of massage it while I'm navigating about the model at the same time. This is really helpful in other areas of the application. If I want to paint on the model while I'm rotating about it, I can do that. Same thing with sculpting. So I think that's close enough so without auto snap checked I'm first going to just relax this mesh and it will help kind of shrink it a bit and smooth it at the same time so I think that's relatively close may relax one more time then uh, with auto snapping checked I can snap in local areas first or I could snap the entire mesh in this case snap probably will be fine yeah or I could go in in the areas that I think it's going to be problematic first. I could snap it locally. Okay, using the brush tool here, can reduce the amount. 
hold the shift key and just lightly tap that area. I'll just try and relax while auto snap is checked. That worked out pretty well. So we'll stop the recording right here and pick up in the next video where we cover the strokes tool. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.